hanging out here, looking down the valley on the western side of Glacier National Park. And this is one of those lookouts you could just spend hours in front of. It's a very popular spot, as you can see, quite touristy, which is good to see. A lot of people coming through the mountains today. I have perched myself on the end of this rock and I'm going to shoot down over this valley looking out over those really nice blossoming plants in the foreground there. I did go for a wander down into those plants to have a look for composition but I just lost too much elevation looking down into that valley and it really lost its three-dimensional feel so I've retreated back up here plus there's probably a hundred people milling in around those plants as well looking for an image as well so it was really hard to find a spot without another head in there. This is a great spot at the moment there's a little bit of sunlight on the mountain there's not much contrast not much shadow it's a very clear picture about midday here. I have found that the mountains here have been at their prime shooting during the middle of the day when the storm clouds come through or just when the nice even light like this is happening. I found waiting for the sunsets around 10 p.m hasn't been that rewarding. I found that these valleys just fill with really dark shadow. I get a nice sky, but it's a really uneven exposure. So just hanging out here during the middle of the day has its rewards. And I'm just gonna grab a few more pictures while the light is painting on the side of that mountain. And I'm shooting this image at f11 at two seconds with a circular polarizer on and a six stop ND filter just to help put a little bit of blur in those clouds in the background. And straight off camera, those results are very pleasing. Welcome back to Canada. Just heading north now, back from Glacier National Park in Montana and heading off into the Yoho National Park area. I have just stopped by the side of the road here for a rest and I'm gonna camp here the night, just on the boundary of the Yoho National Park. What's really caught my attention late this afternoon is this rustic old barn that's sitting in front of that nice little mountain range in the background. It's really interesting as a photographer sometimes, you might be at home and you'll see some international photographers on the side of the road taking photos of what a local might ordinarily think is not much of a subject, but the fact is that it's different and it does add some interest to a photographer, much in the same way as shooting this barn is for me. A lot of people are probably driving past and thinking why are you shooting this old barn? But we don't have barns like this or this particular design with these mountain ranges like this in Tasmania. So it's very interesting. Yep, back down at the barn, just hanging out in the rain. Another Canadian shower around about tea time, which was expected. But what I am hoping for is the unexpected here underneath my little umbrella here and it is to and that is to capture some really nice sun rays late in the afternoon across this setting with the barn and the field. The clouds are swinging from right to left at the moment and you can see the sun's at the top right hand side of the frame. So it'd be lovely if these clouds cleared a little bit, very slowly a little bit because that's about the pace they're going and spread some of those beautiful sun rays over across this scene, so fingers crossed. And let's just hang out here in the rain for a little bit longer. So a slight change to my approach. The sun did come true and revealed itself through those clouds and put some amazing rays of light across this barn. But I've had to bring myself maybe 25, 30 meters down this fence line and shoot the barn from a different angle because my big sun ray wasn't striking the barn where I wanted it to so I've had to change my spot 
So the sun ray now is the big lead in onto the barn, onto the roof, and it's a result that I'm really happy with. The exposures are F16 at a fifteenth of a second. Nothing too big in this rain. I didn't want to stop the shutter down too long so all the raindrops become a blur and it is raining quite hard here at the moment and I either need one of two things. It's a raincoat or a bigger umbrella because I'm quite wet standing here. But to get these shots sometimes you need to put yourself out in the elements a little bit and to get those rewards I am getting a little bit wet today, obviously. The weather is changing again. The rain keeps changing direction. It was coming over my left shoulder. Now it's coming from over the right, so it's quite confused weather. Over to the right-hand side, there is a pocket of blue, and I would really like to see that come over the left-hand side of the barn again, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. I just think this weather at this stage is a little bit confused. Check that out, an amazing rainbow behind me. It's a shame that wasn't over the barn at the moment. That is one sensational rainbow, I hope you can see. So for now, I'm just gonna hang out here under my little umbrella. I'll just pull it down nice and close here. Try and stay a little bit dry. See if those clouds change or the weather changes and improves this anymore. And if not, I'll see you over the next few days along the Rocky Mountains. back into the Yoho Provincial Park here in Canada and this is Natural Bridge. I've just set up and taken a few images just before the sun starts to poke out. I've got a really nice leading line with this waterfall in the foreground leading into this mountain in the background. Camera settings are, it's a 35mm lens and because it's quite overcast still and foggy I have only got a circular polarizer on just to stop the camera down a little bit, around about the half a second to one second. Anything over one second for this waterfall and it just becomes a big white smear in the foreground and it loses any sort of texture. So I've kept it down to about half a second. The mountain in the background is mysterious. It's coming in and out of the fog at the moment. So I only want about half a second on that as well and I've got a really nice composition with those two elements. Just on the way to Takawaka Falls in the Yoho Provincial Park and I'm standing on my own private little beach which is no doubt formed from all the rock flower from up on the glacier which is quite cool. I'm once again underneath my $20 umbrella I bought in Vancouver which has been a fantastic purchase for all this under the rain photography. I'm just on the elbow of this river and what's really caught my attention is this lone little tree hanging out on that rock in the middle of this stream. What I've had to do is come a little bit further upstream just so I can shoot down. And the reason I'm shooting down for this composition is so that I can isolate that little tree against all that fog in the background there. A few moments ago, I was standing downstream. I had the idea that I would photograph this elbow looking upstream, but that little tree hanging out all by itself in the background there got lost with all the trees in behind it. It become camouflaged of sorts. So I'm just on this elbow looking downstream and that fog is rolling in beautifully. I'm really cranking up the exposure here. I have got an exposure of up to 30 seconds. And the reason for that is, is I'm just trying to really slow down those patches of fog in the background just to add a little bit of motion blur to them just to add a little bit of movement to this image alongside this 
rushing river and I think that it frames that section in the middle of the stream quite well. And here in the Yoho Provincial Park at Tekawaka Falls, which is one of the tallest falls in Canada. I'm not sure if it's in the top 10 or five, but it's pretty impressive. I've just set myself back from the river and back from the main viewing platform. This is a fairly tricky waterfall to photograph. There's a lot of barren landscape up around surrounding the waterfall and the cliffs there. And I just think it just lacks a little bit of punch against that waterfall itself so I've retreated down the river here and I've put myself back from the river maybe maybe 10 meters or so and what I'm trying to do is frame this waterfall with some of these trees this is a situation as well where I don't think the top of the waterfall itself makes a fantastic part of the image so I've deliberately put a 35 mil lens on I'm not shooting any wider and the reason for that is, is I'm actually trying to just isolate the top of that waterfall from the main part of the image. And what I've done is I've tried to frame the actual waterfall itself with a couple of these nice green trees on the riverbank here. And I've also tried to include a few in the foreground to separate myself and that river. And the reason for that is just to add some colour, make the image a little bit more dynamic. As far as camera settings go, it's a 35mm lens. I've got a circular polarizer on just to slow the camera down a little bit to get around about a one second exposure at f16 and these results are very pleasing straight off camera. These mountains are just spectacular. This is the Bow Valley Glacier on the Icefields Parkway heading north again to Jasper. As the guidebooks recommend, if you get the opportunity, do the Icefields Parkway in two different directions because you'll get two different perspectives and that's exactly what's happened. Last night was freezing cold down at Lake Louise and no wonders because there's been a huge dump of snow here in Alberta overnight and it is the middle of July or late July so it's a real summer snow which is incredible but what we've got some amazing summery light trying to burst through these wispy clouds in the background and the photography is first class. I'm just going to hang out here at this lake for a while and watch the light it is probably 10 a.m in the morning and a nice light sun shower as well is accompanying this scene and the light on these mountains leading across this lake is sensational <music> Just photographing the Athabasca Valley on the northern part of the Icefields Parkway and it's a beautiful afternoon here. I'm just captivated by these late afternoon sun rays poking through the storm clouds over the back and it's a very nice mountain to photograph over there with the clouds looming around. I've put the 85mm lens on just to help isolate that section of mountain. The valley floor through here as, as impressive as it can look, 
They've got a beetle problem here near Jasper, which is killing a lot of the trees. So that magnificent foreground is actually quite brown and dead looking, which it is. I have done a shutter speed of only half a second here, just to capture the nice sun rays coming through, filtering through the clouds there. I don't need a lengthy shutter speed for that. Just making some final arrangements to my packing, heading back into Vancouver tomorrow. So it's the last night in the RV, touring through the Rocky Mountains, both here in Canada and down in through to Montana. The last three days of photography haven't been amazing. What I've noticed is a huge change in the weather towards the end of July. And with a huge change, I mean a very bright sun and very little cloud coverage. And I've also noticed stopping here in this little town, the difference from when I stayed here the first night two weeks ago, how much water was running down the rivers then and how much is it now, they're almost bare. And just chatting to a few locals, soon after when all the snow melts and there's no more rain for the summer, then the riverbeds go very dry. So keep in mind, if you're coming to shoot waterfalls, then you probably want to be here before the end of July, or you might be disappointed with a very dry river scene and not much water on the waterfalls at all. Just like to say thank you for watching my Canadian and Montana Rocky Mountain adventure. And I look forward to bringing you some new wilderness and photography adventures in the future. Stay tuned. Thank you.